What's going on, everybody? LK here today with Lord Jonathan Tene, and we're going to be talking about one of the tournaments we played in in Japan. So we played, we competed quite a bit. Of course, there was Evo Japan. There was the international 3v3, shout out to Team USA. But to top off our trip, we went to Giuna's tournament. So this is Tatakai Tuesday against all odds, Beast Coast only grand finals. Let's you already go. know. You already know. So uh, today we're going to be watching it. I have actually not watched this since uh, since the higher lords let us know that we have to watch it. I haven't watched it. No spoilers. <laughs> actually, specifically, so no spoilers. Yeah. So yeah, we're just going to watch it. We're going to be reacting to it and then uh, just talking about how we felt playing each other in a grand final and just also like the general feel of the tournament too, because I believe we both won, was it five or six sets? I don't like that. I All right, let's uh, take a look. Yeah. No, they ah, spelled my name on. wrong. No. Oh, pain. It's okay. It's difficult. It's like trying to spell Nubenheimer. It'd be yeah, like man. that. Yeah. So again, uh, I want to say this tournament is single limb, I think. Uh, yeah, it was single um, limb. Yeah, very J Japanese style tournament in the end. So it's yeah. still like a three out of five. Normally, Japanese tournaments are single limb best to one. So <laughs> yeah, it's it, is, uh, it is nice that it's you know still three out of five. A really big part of how I end up playing this is just trying to play around the three seconds of Eddie being dead, right? That's like yeah, probably the course. most important part of like what you do. If you can do it well, you can make Zato's life hell. Yeah. But if you can't do it well, then you get beamed. In this matchup, she's really, really good at killing Eddie, but she's actually like really, really slow. Like she's even slower than Zato, right? To make those three and a half seconds count of Eddie being dead, you need to be pretty, pretty right. Like you need to have a good reader on your opponent because otherwise it's kind of hard to catch your opponent. And then obviously that's if I'm just running away because this round, basically what I did, Eddie ran out and I just started going in, right? Because I set up me running away after Eddie dies. And then here I just, I just like stole a bunch of turns. Yeah, it's definitely like a hard part of this matchup against just like any Zato, right? Because essentially if you pull up to a stream, for example, I'm always like any Zato always on Right? because you have to get good at finding out like oh does this guy run away non-stop does he summon like lazily some people are like, super aggressive floating above you non-stop and stuff and you have to like recognize the tendency yeah so i've I actually felt like the pace that you like switched things up was pretty good because for example gobo only runs that's actually probably the thing that helped me the most is he, he only runs and i do immediately latif fights so much that i'm like oh like oh I'm my done. god like <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. like there's so many different ways to play Zato, but they're kind of all good in their own way, which means that like mm -hmm. obviously blah, 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 character expression, right? Also, it means that fighting Zato players, if you've never played them before, is really annoying. Also, even even if you have played them, switching between fighting different Zato players is pretty annoying. When you went through the list of the Zato Legion, right? yeah. like a lot of people would say Peppery has a pretty unique play style, mm -hmm. but out of the ones that I played in that time, I would say he's like pretty normal. The thing to be fair, though, is that you're my basis of normal. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, so it could be that you're just not normal. Uh, I think me and Pep also have a lot of things similar. I'm, I remember uh, Juno, like I could hear him during the set. He was on commentary talking about how LK keeps holding his burst forever. It's because he doesn't know that Zato has 10 quadrillion ways to bait burst yeah. at every point in his combo. Basically, because LK understands Zato's combo structure well enough, he knows that there's a lot of spots where even if he could have bursted, it wasn't guaranteed and it was really risky, right? And then as Zato, there's a lot of spots where if I don't have Eddie, burst baiting, I don't lose that much damage, right? And if I do get the burst bait, then I get Eddie back guaranteed and I get a combo. So the risk is is like I don't lose that much and the reward is obviously crazy and for example like that 5d after the frog hit it was just out of his burst range so I I felt like I closed out a lot of rounds this set by hitting you on like on the last hit where you couldn't burst you, you can see it in the the twitch chat too they're like oh when is he gonna burst but it's like oh yeah there you go good timing. It, it's probably not common knowledge that like oh Zato's 5k is burst safe or like he has a combo part where he does close slash and does no beat at the same time and then jumps at you and blocks yeah and, or like you two know, aspect like, law it gets kind of hard thinking about where to burst you know and then if you lose your burst against Zato if you live that round if you win that round then the next round is really paid mm -hmm. uh, if he catches you quickly so it, it, it's pretty tough the japanese players were all losing their mind at lk's mix-ups because uh <laughs> they've never seen this type of bike on okay before i mean i've seen it before but it's still a guess right but they were all like yeah. they got whiplash every time you you did a throw yeah. mix up on them it was crazy yeah because so this is like a thing that comes when it's like training partners right like mm. you're pretty familiar with my structures you're familiar with the things that like i'm not really comfortable with and a unique thing about bike is that i'm not saying it's a total solo mission there, there's not like a like an army like there's like the ac army or the nago army so you're familiar with a lot of those problems the sure. thing i was surprised at Jap the japanese players too is not even just a mix it's like what happens when you get hit so like they get hit and they're like oh snap and then like yeah. two seconds later they die and they're like why did i even die like what happened for sure but, yeah uh, yeah, you're just used to seeing like if it happens, if it happens, right? Yeah. And if you get out, then congrats. <laughs> like, good sure. job. 
The other thing is like in this mid range, obviously if Zato, if you're at a pixel against him, it's like, it's really hard to win. But the <laughs> other problem is that Biken has like, I don't want to say she has trouble anti airing Zato because she has a lot of good tools, but she doesn't have like the standard answers to it because her 5P yes. is not an anti air. In that said, I also abuse that a lot against you. Any hit like from jump ins, for example, can turn into like the entire game because any counter hit jump in, even if it's like at a really bad height, can still turn into 2D knockdown into mix ups, right? So mm. Biken can't really use her normal defensive strength in those situations. Yeah, it's a lot about like keeping control and stuff. Maybe everyone is different when you go into like sets and stuff. I came from like a couple of heaters back to back. You had one too though. You had, uh, you had Minomaya, um, Minomaya yeah. which, which was like a, a nail biter. But I had a couple, like I just came from playing Gold Lewis. So I was like, Phew. yeah. And then I played course. a hit player before that, which was also like, Phew. and a lot of my responses is also like, you, you're just playing around my reactions really well, I thought too. That led it to like decisive stuff. It wasn't like I did not get any opportunity. This set, I, it was, it was definitely, I felt like it was 3 0 close though you know those vibes um and that like <laughs> There's a lot of, I don't know if I want to say clutch or lucky decisions, but there were a lot of things where I was like, all right, I'm going to go for this and hope it works, right? Mm -hmm. And I felt like I was pretty much always right on those, and I think that's why I won. That's not really the type of win that you want because it feels like it's not something you can recreate consistently, but I mean, mm -hmm. hey, it worked out this time. As usual, if you guys have any questions or comments, definitely feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Uh, like, subscribe if you guys feel like it, and we'll see y'all next time. Peace out.